Xi Jinping, the current vice president of China, is expected to take over Hu Jintao's position and become the country's fifth president. However, his road to presidency has been paved with obstacles, including an alleged coup by disgraced politician Bo Xilai. On Thursday, 62-year-old Ching Chong, who was jailed in China for close to three years for espionage and spying, held a meet the author session in Singapore for his book *My 1,000 Days Ordeal: A Patriot's Torture*. The former Straits Times China bureau chief took questions on the implications of Bo's expulsion from China's ruling party and whether Xi can shape China's political transition. If Bo Xilai succeeded, then I think there's a a, a A like likelihood that China would change a little bit, would lean towards the leftist uh, uh, ideology. Maoism will come back, and all many of those uh, market-oriented reform uh, uh, things would be either stopped or or slow down at least. See what he has done in 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 Chongqing. He is trying to revive. Many of the policies that Mao did during the Cultural Revolutionary days. One example is that、uh, China has been conducting at least political、uh, legal reform、uh, for many years. However, what Bo Xilai did in, in in Chongqing is to reverse this trend towards a more、uh, liberalized、uh, legal system. For example, he, he stressed that if you can. Prisoners would get a, a sentence reduction if they excel in chanting the rap songs. Now this is ridiculous, isn't it? And there are many, many, many ways showing that Bo Xilai is relying heavily on mass movement to get rid of、um, uh, gangs or gangsters. Now these are、uh, Maoist way of doing things, and I think. The reason why lots of people are afraid of Bo Xilai、uh, gaining power is because he would resort to Mao's way of doing things. As for Xi Jinping, I don't know whether Xi would be、uh, reform-oriented or, 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 or not. From what he had, from the speeches that he had made so far, I am not sure whether he is. Really reform-minded. He has made several major speeches. One in Hong Kong, saying advocating the cooperation between the three branches of power, and this is absolutely alien to the Hong Kong tradition. And 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 this is very typical socialist ways of thinking. He also has said once in a history seminar, asking. The historians, not to、uh, badmouth the CCP history. Now, that is a very strong a-、uh, allegation against historians because the Chinese history, the Chinese Communist history in the first thirty years, is laden with atrocities. And if the if Chinese historians Face up with all these problems squarely. There's, I mean, it's good for the country, and yet, in a, there's once a certain national conference on history, on the party's history. She told everybody not to paint a, a dark picture of the party. So I think this is from this kind of things. He shows that she is not very proactively reform-minded. But she has also come under strong pressure from the liberals who want to see she taking uh, uh, China a step ahead. For example, the old cadres, the old liberal cadres, has been citing examples of his father's good doings. His father has been、um, a very liberal-minded uh, 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 people who dare to reduce. Mao Zedong's target for killing people to reduce them by one half, saving a lot of lives, and because of this, his father gained high popularity among the people and the cadres. And his father is the only old guy 
who dare to dispute uh, Deng Xiaoping's decision to sack Hu Yaobang in 1986. Again, this brought him great fame. And therefore, the old liberals in the party were writing all sorts of um, articles expecting Xi to follow the footsteps of his father and try to be more reform-minded and more liberal. So Xi is under this kind of pressure as well. And lately, when Xi disappeared for a while, I was told that, in fact, he, has, he had a meeting with Hu Deping, who is the son of Hu Yaobang, and currently in China, he is the standard bearer of the reform-minded people. And during his disappearance, I was told that he had a meeting with this guy, which shows that after the ball crisis, he has to ally with the pro-reform people. So this can also be a, a, a factor in affecting his future uh, uh, policies. But until now, I think it's still too early to say either way. Who Xi Jinping's father was, his name uh, was Xi Zhongxun. Uh, he was a deputy prime minister at one stage in the Chinese earlier history. And as to the thing about the killing, Ching Chong was referring to the mass purges that the CCP conducted in the early years, I think the early 50s. Right. Uh, and, and Mao's order to the, the, the party then was that because they wanted to show they are revolutionaries, they wanted to purge the landlords and all this, uh, the, the supposed order was to kill 1% of every 1,000. And Xi Senior, Xi Zhongxun, reduced it to 0.5 per thousand and saved half the people who were intended for execution. Uh, that was a tremendous achievement. I think they have become more and more sophisticated now. From the muttering program against uh, Xi Jinping and, and, and Wen Jiabao, you can see that they are making use of the media in, in a more and more sophisticated ways. And in recent years, we also found that the Chinese, because of their, their, their strength and power and wealth, they have embarked upon a so-called grand propaganda scheme, trying to reach out to all the international newspapers, especially the English language ones, trying to influence their editors, trying to treat their reporters, and even trying to buy up their pages in much the same way as advertisement in order to put their views across. So I think the Chinese leadership has been uh, uh, becoming more sophisticated in this regard. Watch our other clips for more on Ching Xiong's take on Chinese politics and scandals involving key persons in China's political succession.